Hi, I'm Rupa Ramani and you're watching First Sports. Now, Arsenal Football Club has a storied legacy, but one that is marred by inconsistency. A club with 13 league titles and yet none in the past two decades. Clearly, there's legacy, but one that hasn't stopped or at least lasted the test of time. The Gunners, as they are famously called, have had moments of brilliance, overshadowed by bouts of underperformance. That has been their story of late, but the tide, it seems, is changing. From the bottler's tag, the Gunners are now title contenders, and one man has been responsible for this turnaround. It's been a resurgence led by none other than their manager, Mikel Arteta. Arsenal beat Manchester United 1-0 in their Premier League clash last night. Leandro Trossard scored the only goal in the 20th minute. And that scoreline stayed. The win, of course, means Arsenal are back on top of the Premier League points table, giving Manchester City a bit of a fight, who's just one point behind in the second spot. So what did Arsenal do right? Heading into the United game, Arsenal were two points behind Manchester City and despite United struggling this entire season, the Red Devils, we know, are a threat at least at Old Trafford, their home. The pressure was on Arsenal, but Mikel Arteta's men weren't going to bottle it this time, weren't going to bottle up the league this time. The game saw a clear change in Arsenal's mentality. The Gunners pushed United at their ground and proved why they are title contenders this year. They refused to crumble under pressure. They were the more dominant side with 11 shots on target. Just a reiteration of how they have performed, not just last night, but throughout the whole season. Arsenal have fought tooth and nail for every single point this year, not letting pressure get to them. Their biggest fault from the previous season. And this tenacity, this drive, isn't something that's happened overnight. The process has been a while coming and it's been arduous. For instance, the club has persisted with Mikel Arteta. Kept the faith in him and his method for close to five years now. When Arteta took over Arsenal in 2019, everyone was a little sceptical. Many questioned the decision. Could a relatively inexperienced man turn the tide for a club in dire need of rejuvenation? As manager of the side. Because Arteta had only served as an assistant to Manchester City manager Pep Guardiola. That was the closest he got to managing a team, managing a side, a top football club. Sure, he spent three years from 2016 to 2019 with Guardiola. That's precious. But that was still under the wings of Guardiola. And managing a club like Arsenal with close to zero experience at the helm seemed a bit impossible. But even for a student of the great Guardiola. But Arteta's tactical brilliance has constantly come through, come to the fore in the past five seasons. After he took over the reins towards the end of the 2020 season, Arsenal won the FA Cup, but they finished fifth in the Premier League. So no qualification for the European competitions. Not a fabulous start, but Arteta did all right in the coming year. With Arteta in the, in the role right through the season, the Gunners finished eighth once again, and it seemed like Mike, Mikel Arteta wasn't the right man for the job. But come 2022, the Spaniards started moving things around. With a fifth place and Europa League qualification, Arsenal began showing some signs of a resurgence. And ever since the 2023 season, Arsenal have been title contenders. Last season, they were title favourites up until January. But Arsenal's old demons reared their heads once again. The club lost its plot and finished five points behind eventual winners Manchester City, letting that pressure get to them the moment of the whole situation. And despite a second-place finish, the tag of bottlers came back to haunt Arsenal. And despite having talented players like Bukayo Saka, Leandro Trossard, Declan Rice and Martin Odegaard, the trophy drought continued for yet another year. But that can all change now. Arteta proved that it's about more than just the raw talent. It's about the mentality. And under Arteta, the club has proved that they have got that winning mentality because the manager himself believes in it. The mentality and the manifestation of that thought. My brain always took me to the place where we are lifting the Premier League. That's what my brain is doing at the moment. So I just follow my brain and my gut and this is how I feel. And this is as well the way that I want everybody to think and hopefully we can achieve it. Now, unlike last season, Arsenal haven't faltered this year. The club is consistently pushing with only five losses and five draws. 
The club even has a superior goal difference to that of City. And in the Premier League, they haven't lost to Manchester City and Liverpool this year. Arteta is saying he isn't afraid of the experience of managers like Pep Guardiola or Jurgen Klopp seems to have rubbed off on the players too. The club has been more attacking and more swift in their play. This year especially, Arteta's arsenal is more focused on one-touch football, which is not only fascinating to watch but also dangerous for their opponents. But despite their dream season, Arsenal will need a little bit of help, a little luck from their North London rivals Tottenham Hotspurs if they want to lift the league title. Manchester City may be just one point behind Arsenal but they have a one-game advantage. And before their final clash, City will face Tottenham on the 14th of May. That's the D-date. And if City draws or loses against Tottenham, the title hopes will swing in Arsenal's favour. So Arsenal will be rooting for Tottenham on the 14th. I'm going to be the biggest fan of Tottenham ever. We are all going to be. So let's hope for the best. Havertz, of course, uh, echoing what every single player, every single fan of Arsenal will be praying for come 14th and will be rooting for. The stage is set then for a dramatic final few days. Arsenal, once written off as a also rants, now stand on the precipice, precipice of something great. In a season that has been defined by their resilience and determination, all it takes now is a little bit of luck and some more grit. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison Lagrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. South Africa goes to the polls on the 29th of May. I will track the election and bring you ground reports. Is it the end of the road for the African National Congress? And will former President Jacob Zuma stage a dramatic comeback? From elections, to climate change, to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa, the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post.